Hello everybody! In this lecture, we are still busy with partnerships and will focus on the rights and duties of the partners, the partners' liabilities, and then the grounds and consequences when a partnership is dissolved. In this lecture, we will investigate the rights and duties of the various partners and explain the liabilities jointly and severally of the partners. We will focus on the dissolution of partnerships by exploring the grounds for dissolution and by describing the consequences on the legal relationships that was created upon dissolving a partnership. We will also briefly look at the eventual liquidation of a partnership. So, Partners have various rights and duties, and some of these rights and duties are related to the three essentialia of a partnership, and others are natural consequences or naturalia that flow from the partnership agreement. So, of course, partners have the right to claim delivery of the contribution as per the agreement. So, in other words, if you as a partner agree to unconditionally contribute 25,000 rand, then the other partners have the right to expect this delivery or this contribution as per your agreement. All the partners also have the right to share in the profits. If and when compensation has been agreed upon, the partner has the right to claim this compensation as per the agreement. Now, a partner may use the partnership assets because remember, partners are co-owners in the partnership assets. But these assets must be used to further the aims of the partnership. And a partner may also use partnership property for his own purposes, but only if the consent of the other co-partners have or has been obtained, or if the partner's limited use of the property will not conflict with the interest of the partnership. Partners, of course, are all entitled to participate in the management of the partnership and to perform management functions. And we have already discussed the principle of mutual mandate in the previous lecture. In terms of duties, the most important duty, which is also threefold, is the reciprocal fiduciary duty or relationship. Now, what is a fiduciary duty? A fiduciary duty is a legal obligation, and this is a legal obligation of the highest degree. And this high legal obligation means that the party who's got this obligation, the party charged with the obligation, must act in the best interest of the others. So, for example, the party charged with the obligation will then be called the fiduciary or has the fiduciary duty. And this person or this partner in our instance will be entrusted with a care of money or property. And this care must be the highest degree of care. So, partners have a reciprocal fiduciary duties. And there are three fiduciary duties. Firstly, partners must comply with their own duties in terms of the agreement. And this speaks to the first right that we also looked at. So if you have agreed to contribute 25,000 unconditionally, then you have the duty to comply with this agreement. Also then to advance the partnership interests unselfishly and to disclose all information relating to the partnership. Partners also have the duty to keep proper accounts and are in return also entitled to access the accounting records 
of the partnership so that you can see what is going on in the books of the partnership. In terms of the liability of the partners, we know that in a partnership, partners are jointly and severally liable. That means not only as a partnership, but also in your personal capacity as a partner. And here we can reference the case, the Galdenais case, where in the court had to decide on whether both partners had to contribute towards a certain debt that was outstanding. And the court said, yes, of course, because not only are you liable to a third person or to a third party in your capacity as a partnership, but also in your capacity as individual partners. So when a partnership is sued, the partnership as an entity, although it's not necessarily a legal entity, but the partnership must be sued. But individual partners can also be sued. After the dissolution of the partnership, the partnership will remain liable to thirds. And this liability will not only rest on the partnership, but then also on the individual partners. Why? Because you are jointly and severally liable for partnership obligations. So when the partnership dissolves, obviously the legal relationship between the parties or the partners will also then change. What will happen is the partnership estate will be liquidated and then creditors will be paid. And if there's any surplus, this will be divided amongst the partners. And in the previous lecture, we looked at how the division of assets upon dissolvement of a partnership will be done. There are no formalities required for the dissolution of a partnership, but it must be widely publicized. What does that mean? In order to avoid any liabilities to parties acting on the erroneous impression that the partnership still exists, it must be made widely known that this partnership is no longer in existence. There are a number of grounds for dissolution of a partnership. Some of them are based on agreements, others on the change of memberships. Some dissolutions can be achieved by court orders or through getting a court order. And then there are some other grounds that constitute valid grounds for the dissolution of partnerships. Sometimes a partnership has been formed for a specific term, so a specific period of time. And this will then terminate automatically upon the expiry of that term or that period. Unless the partners expressly or tacitly agree to continue with the partnership. So if a partner wants to terminate the partnership agreement unilaterally before the expiration of the specific term or time, he can do so only on the basis of lawful grounds. But if the period or the specific term has expired, then any partner may terminate the partnership agreement upon a reasonable notice. Now, what constitutes lawful grounds upon which a partner may, before the expiration of the specific term, terminate the partnership agreement? Now, examples of lawful causes or, or lawful grounds for the termination of a partnership include misconduct on the part of one of the partners. And this misconduct normally irrevocably destroy mutual trust and confidence in and between the partners. Another lawful ground would be the bridge of a material term of the partnership contract by one of the partners. So material term, a term that makes the partnership agreement a partnership agreement. 
the fact that there is no longer a reasonable expectation that a profit will be made by the partnership, as well as personal circumstances and misfortunes which can affect a specific partner. Sometimes partnerships are also brought into existence for a specific event. And then a partnership may or will terminate upon the occurrence of this specific event. For example, if a partnership has been formed for a specific project, let's say for the building of a specific office block, then the partnership will terminate as soon as this office block has been built. So as soon as the object or the goal or the event has been reached. Any changes in membership will terminate a partnership. So the admittance of a new partner will create a new partnership and will automatically terminate the previous partnership and the previous partnership agreement. Legally, it is regarded as an agreement between the existing partners. So then for the prospective partner to form a new partnership, there will have to be new terms and conditions. A partnership will also terminate upon the retirement or death of a partner. And consequently, the partnership between the remaining partners will also be terminated. They may, of course, conclude a new partnership. Then, partnerships will also dissolve upon the sequestration of a private, a private estate or a estate belonging to the partnership. So when the private estate of a partner is sequestrated, the partnership will dissolve. But this does not mean that the partnership estate will also be sequestrated. When the partnership estate is sequestrated, the partnership will consequently automatically dissolve. Now, personal circumstances such as illness or absence of a partner or a mental certification or the fact that a partner becomes an enemy subject as a result of war may also result in a court order which terminates the partnership agreement. Partners may also apply to court for an order dissolving the partnership on the basis of a breach of the fiduciary relationship between the partners. Do you still remember what the fiduciary duty entails? It entails that the person with this obligation must exercise the highest degree of care over the property or money of others. Then sometimes a partnership will also be dissolved if it can, becomes objectively impossible for the partnership to function or to achieve its purpose as a result of events beyond the control of the partners, for example, due to extraordinary natural forces. A partnership may also terminate by the, be terminated by the unilateral act of a partner if notice is given or if the partnership is renounced for some lawful cause or based on a lawful ground. We have seen that partnerships can dissolve either by means of an agreement when there was a specific term or a specific event that was agreed upon. Partnerships can dissolve on the grounds of new members, a member who has died or retired, or the sequestration of a private or partnership estate. Partnership can also dissolve upon court orders, either because of personal circumstances or because of the breach of a fiduciary duty. 
partnerships can also dissolve if it has become objectively impossible to achieve the purpose or result for which the partnership was established. Or if a partner unilaterally wants to terminate the partnership agreement, but this must be done by giving a notice of such intention. So while the partnership comes to an end and is then being liquidated, the partners still owe a fiduciary duty to each other. So remember, a fiduciary duty this high level of care over someone else's money and property. They still owe this reciprocal level of care towards each other. What does come to an end, though, is the partnership agreement and then, of course, this mutual mandate of the partners to be able to act in legal capacity in, in individually in the administration of the partnership. The rights and duties of the partnership towards third parties remain valid and binding. So the partnership, in other words, still has some rights and duties despite being dissolved or being liquidated towards third parties. And the partners, of course, as a partnership remains liable for its obligations, but then also the partners become liable for the partnership's obligations. Liquidation, which of course follows the dissolution of the partnership, entails the realization of assets of the partnership, the payment of debts, and then of course the distribution of any assets, but also of the liabilities amongst the partners. Because remember, the partners are both jointly and severally liable. The partnership agreement may also contain provisions regarding the liquidation process. So the partners might have agreed on how to liquidate the partnership in the partnership agreement. And partners may conduct the liquidation process themselves, or if not, they can appoint a liquidator to do so. In this lecture, we focused on the rights and duties of the partners and especially on the three broad categories of fiduciary duties, namely that a partner must comply with his or her duties in terms of the partnership agreement, that the partner must advance the partnership interest unselfishly, and that all information relating to the partnership must be disclosed to all the co-partners. We explained the liabilities of the partners, both jointly and severally. And then we looked at the dissolution of a partnership. We focused on the various grounds for dissolution. And here we looked at dissolution based on grounds of an agreement on, base, on the basis of new membership or change of membership grounds that require a court order, and then two other grounds for dissolving a partnership. We describe the consequences of a dissolution partnership, which includes that the partners still owe each other a fiduciary duty during liquidation. We also said that the mutual mandate and the partnership agreement will be terminated and that the duties of the partners towards third parties remain valid and that partners as well as the partnership remains jointly and severally liable for the partnership obligations. Then we also briefly looked at the eventual liquidation of the partnership and how the partnership agreement may contain provisions regarding lit the litigation process. We also said that partners may conduct the liquidation themselves or they may appoint a liquidator to do so.